I'm John from Rhino Ag. Today we're going to go through the setup, pre-delivery, maintenance and leveling of this 4125 cutter. This is a 4 inch cut, 12 and a half foot wide mower. We want this cutter to deliver the quality and performance that Rhino is known for. So let's get started. One important component is selecting the tractor. This particular tractor is our shop tractor. We use it to set up most of the cutters here at Rhino, and it represents the tractors that are most generally used in the industry. This tractor is set up with three hydraulic valves, and that's what's required for the 4125 standard. We'll use one valve for raise and lower and one each for the wings. We also have adjusted the draw bar at 14 inches. That 14 inch measurement is important when using the 540 RPM drive shaft that we're gonna to use today. Here at Rhino Ag, we include an owner's manual with every purchase. The owner's manual for this cutter is located on the hose holder, right in the front of the hitch here. It's important to familiarize yourself with the owner's manual. There's maintenance, assembly, and operating instructions in each manual. Now we'll attach the safety chain we're going to attach it through the draw bar support. Once the retaining bolt is removed, we can install the drive line on the main gearbox. reinstall the retaining bolt and torque to its specification that's listed in the owner's manual. After installing the main drive line on the tractor, give it a couple tugs to make sure it's attached correctly. We'll attach the drive line shielding chains, front and rear. So now we'll attach the hydraulic hoses to the tractor. We'll reference the decal located on the hose holder for the attachment locations. The red and the blue are the raise and lower. They'll be in port one. The hose with the yellow zip tie will be in port two. and we'll attach the hose with the green zip tie in port three. Finally, we'll attach the lighting connector, the seven pin outlet. Now that we've got the hydraulic lines attached to the tractor, we're gonna charge the hydraulic system. It doesn't come charged from the factory, so we'll have to do that in the pre-delivery. Charging the hydraulic system will allow us to remove the transport locks and stow them correctly. Now that the hydraulic system is charged, this will allow us to take the transport locks out of shipping position. So I engaged the hydraulics and raised the cutter. Now we'll uh, remove the transport lock. And we're also gonna remove the cylinder stops. With the transport lock removed and the hydraulic stops removed, we're gonna raise and lower the cutter three times to rephase the hydraulic system and circulate all the hydraulic oil.
Now that the hydraulics are charged and rephased, we're ready to level the cutter front to back. To level the cutter front to back, we're going to adjust the level rods. We'll do this when we're attached to the tractor, that way we have the correct drawbar height. We're going to lower the cutter to the ground, that way it takes the pressure off these jam nuts on the level rods. Now that we use the tractor hydraulics to set the cutter on the ground, it's level front to back. And we're going to maintain this level by adjusting these level rod adjustment nuts. Make sure each level rod is adjusted evenly. Many of these 4125s will be operating in orchards and groves. Because of that, we have developed an optional grove package. This grove package consists of this deflector that deflects the tree branches up and over the hydraulic cylinders, protecting the hydraulic cylinders and lines, as well as the tree branches themselves. So to level this cutter side to side, we will need to remove this grove package deflector. The grove package deflector is retained by six bolts. Now we'll take this 5 16 Allen bit and remove the grove shield from the other side. We chose a level area in the shop to adjust the cutter side to side. We can see that the bubble level shows that we're a little bit uh, out of adjustment on this wing. So to adjust the wing, we're going to adjust this eye bolt. We're going to use the same inch and a half wrenches that we used to adjust the level rods fore and aft. That's real good right there. Now I'm gonna run the front nut tight. And jam those together. Now this wing is level side to side and we're ready to repeat this on the other side. Now that our leveling procedure is complete, we're gonna reinstall the Grove package and then move on to general maintenance. So now covering general maintenance of this 4125. We're going to start with the gearboxes. The gearboxes are factory filled with 85W140 gear lube, and each of the blade boxes have a dipstick. And there's a range at the bottom of the dipstick that the oil should be in, and we're going to check each one of those. The oil level is checked with the dipstick screwed entirely down. We'll repeat this procedure on the other two blade boxes, and then we'll check the divider box. It requires a different process, and we'll do it now. The divider box is located underneath this shield. This is the divider box here. To check the oil level, we remove the upper plug. It's called the level plug. The oil level should be right at that plug or just below. I'm using a piece of wire to detect the oil. And the oil is right at the bottom of that wire. That's good. Put the plug back in. And we're good to go. Part of general maintenance is greasing. This 4125 has four main grease circs on the frame, one at the rear axle and three at the tongue. Grease those initially at setup and then every eight hours after that. Greasing the drive lines is a part of general maintenance as well. Please refer to the owner's manual for specifics on drive line grease procedures. On this particular 4125, each U-joint has a grease circ as well as the profiles, but pay particular attention to this constant velocity joint. It's a high wear item and you want to make sure you get it greased correctly. Now that our cutter is attached correctly to the tractor, level front to back and side to side, and properly greased, we're ready to set the cut height and go mow. 
To do so, we're going to add cylinder stops to the hydraulic cylinder ram. At this cylinder ram is where we set the cut height. Thanks for following along in this pre-delivery and setup video of this 4125. If you have any more questions, please call the RhinoAg Technical Service Team or visit us at rhinoag.com.